From the Oval Office yesterday, here's how the president addressed Democrats pushing to get the, uh, the Mueller report here. Listen. Whether it's Shifty Shift or Jerry Nadler, anything we give them will never be enough. What about the fact We could give them, it's a 400-page report, right? We could give them 800 pages, and it wouldn't be enough. They'll always come back and say, it's not enough, it's not enough. Alan Dershowitz wrote the book, The Case Against the Democratic House Impeaching Trump. And, sir, thank you for your time. We're listening with half an ear on Jerry Nadler. We might get interrupted here, but uh, I, I would expect the subpoena to go through. Democrats have a majority on this committee. Big committee, yes. too, 41 members there. Can they win legally in their fight to see as much as they want? No, they can't. No court should and would issue a subpoena for unredacted report when the rules of the Justice Department provide for the Justice Department through the Attorney General to make that decision. This is all about politics. They, the Democrats, want to make sure that the Republicans are perceived as those who stop the Americans from seeing the report. They want to be on the right side of transparency and disclosure. But they have to obey the law. A report includes material that can never be unpublished once it's published. Grand jury material, classified information, privileged information. And so a court would never or never should uh, issue a blanket uh, subpoena for everything. And if they did, it would be stayed by a higher court because once the cat is out of the bag, you can't put it back in. And so all the interests are in favor of not disclosing until it's clear it should be disclosed rather than disclosing and then have a higher court say, whoops, you made a mistake. You shouldn't have done it. So well, what about this the is last politics, point that, not that, law. That that's Catherine Herridge made there about the U.S. Supreme Court. How, how, how would they rule? Would they, would they take a case like this, sir? Of course not. Uh, they would say that uh, the attorney general has the authority. By the time it got to the Supreme Court, the attorney general will have issued the report. If they have problems with the redaction, they can challenge those in court. But again, courts will support the attorney general's authority to make appropriate redactions unless they're done for clearly partisan political reasons. And one compromise might be to hand some of the unredacted material over to special committees that have classification and are sworn under oath not to disclose it. There's a risk that could leak. But in the end, this is not about the law. This is about mm -hmm. politics. The law is clear. The attorney general has the authority to decide how much and when and under what circumstances to release the report. Just Remember, uh, too, uh, that, that point, generally prosecutorial uh, reports are not leaked, are not, are not provided to the public. Uh, They're kept secret. Uh, make your best guess today, knowing that we haven't seen it. How much do you think Bill Barr says, here's 400 pages and there's 250 or so that are not redacted or blacked out? What, what, what's your guess about what he does here? My guess is he'll... It'll be more than 300. I don't think he'll over-redact. I think he'll redact for purposes of national security, grand jury. Uh, he might go to a court and say, Re release this grand jury material. That's possible, too. That would take some time, but that could be done. But I don't think we're going to see massive redactions, which raises the question, is it proper to release material critical of people who have not been indicted? Remember when Comey did that to Hillary Clinton Everybody was complaining about that. Here we're probably going to see material release that are critical to subjects of the investigation that were not indicted. And everybody should remember, this is a prosecutorial report. It's one-sided. They didn't examine witnesses who are favorable to the subjects, and they didn't cross-examine witnesses who are unfavorable to the subjects. So we're going to see a one-sided report. The president's team will have an opportunity to respond to it, and then the American public can make judgments. The American public eventually should see a great deal, but how much? is up to the Justice Department me, and the Attorney General, who's a very you, honorable man and wants me, to do the right thing. Let me take you back to Lindsey Graham last night. He, he's calling for an investigation of the investigators. Um, I know you're not too keen on that, but here's where he made his case with Sean Hannity no. last night. Former Director Comey will get to testify in the light of day. I'll ask him about the dossier. Was it the chief reason you got a warrant against Carter Page? If there's a counterintelligence investigation opened against the Trump campaign, why didn't you tell Trump about it so he could do something like you told Feinstein? And at the end of the day, how could you write that Clinton did nothing wrong even before you interviewed her? I know you don't like the idea and you would not support it. However, why not get to the mm -hmm. bottom of where all this began and why? 
Well, I think we should have gotten to the bottom. We should have had a nonpartisan independent commission like the 9-11 Commission of experts, and we would have gotten to the bottom of this. Now we have two partisan calls for expert, for investigations. I understand why the Republicans want to play tit for tat. You're investigating us, we'll investigate you. I think the American public would be better off without having these partisan investigations, let Congress do its job of legislating. But I go back to what I said on day one, nonpartisan, 9-11 type investigation. The American public would trust it. It would have been done openly and nonpartisan with experts, and we would have confidence in the conclusions of the report. Nobody is going to be satisfied with Republican truth on the one hand and Democratic truth on the other hand. We need the real truth. Well, this hearing is going to get hot, and we're waiting for that as Jerry Nadler makes his opening statement. Thank you, sir. Alan Dershowitz is with us today from Florida. We'll talk again very soon. Thank you. Thank you.